how do you deal with the fact that you offer something to your audience, a program, a product, a service, but they don't respond in the way that you had hoped? The, you know, maybe there are no sales, uh, nobody signed up, or very few people signed up or inquired. So how do you go through that, those emotions in that process? Well, I'm going to share with you my experience today, uh, recent experience, and encourage you to stay on the path of experimentation. Because here is a truth that I hope you will take on and embody and remind yourself of. Your success is inevitable if you stay on the path of experimentation. The only way to truly fail is to say, I give up on trying different things. But if you are willing to keep an open mind, right? Because reality has so many factors that you can't predict even 1% of the factors that are going to influence whether or not your business is going to work or not your business, like I said, Success is inevitable if you stay on the path of experimentation. But you can't predict whether any one campaign will work. So the question for you is, are you open to observing reality and then adjusting your experimentations to match reality better and better and better as you go along? All along, I hope you can do it with a sense of curiosity, playfulness, joyful experimentation, knowing that in the big picture, success is inevitable and you are going to be taken care of. So the uh, sort of initiative, the idea for this topic uh, is based on the fact that I've been building my side business now for six months. The side business, for those of you who haven't heard about it, is a personal development, spiritual mentoring business that is separate from the business that you are watching right now, George Cow, Authentic Business Coach, is my main business. This is what I make a full-time living doing. And then my side business, I started six months ago uh, in large part to feel what it's like to be you again. I wanted to, I wanted to know what is it like for somebody who has no audience, and some of you watching this are already farther along, you already have an audience, you're already doing fine, and that's great. But I, was, I wanted to experience the sort of the lowest common denominator that I could ex possibly experience, which is somebody with no audience, somebody who um, is just, ha has no experience selling anything, any services or products in this particular niche. I've never sold a single dollar in the personal growth spiritual mentoring niche. So, uh, and I've never written any books about that. I've never, you know, blogged about it. So I really am starting new. And in that side business, and you'll, you'll, you'll hear more about this, uh, why this is a challenge. But in that side business, I am anonymous. I don't reveal George Cow, the name. I don't tell people, even though I make videos, I never say my name and nobody has looked up yeah, you know, no, no, I mean, you could, you could probably do a very, 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 very clever, you know, search in some way to find out this person's image. No, but nobody has discovered, discovered, nobody has crossed these two audiences. So you are not seeing any of my posts from my side business. I exclude you all when I post on Facebook there, and then I exclude them when I when I post here. So it's totally different audiences. They don't know who I am. They don't know my background. I don't get the benefit of all of you who already trust me to. So, so these are all new people, people who have no idea who I am, cold audiences I'm starting with. So six months later, uh, working only two hours per week. Now, my guess is that you have more than two hours per week to work on your business. Well, because I have a full-time business here and I, I purposely am trying to experience lowest common denominator again, I only work two hours per week there. And so six months later, here's the update. I have approximately 2,500 people now who have engaged in at least one of my posts in that side business in the last six months, liked, commented, or shared. So Facebook gives me those stats in the uh, custom audiences. 
um, those 2,500 people all arrived, most of them, almost all of them, some of them arrived from word of mouth now from my new people, but most of them arrived through Facebook ads. That's how I how I'd reach them. So therefore, I am able to reach my warm audience again through Facebook ads because, well, it, I've proven that they're able to see ads and not blocking Facebook ads, right? Um, almost all of my posts in that side business have, well, all of them have been on, I don't even have a website yet. Uh, I ju I'm just using a Facebook business page and almost all of my posts there have been text only posts, 300 to 1,000 words, no images, uh, no links, just text only, just, you know, sharing my thoughts, my message, my, you know, philosophy, okay? Um, and then besides the, the once weekly text only post, I've also started doing about three months into my, my audience building, I started doing Facebook live videos again. I tried in the very beginning of my audience building and, and I noticed that nobody wanted to watch my videos. And that's a lesson for, for me and maybe for you is that it's usually harder to get people to watch your videos when they don't know who you are versus reading your writing. It's easier to read writing and kind of get a quick sense of what the message is about, right? It's it takes more energy and time to like watch the video and wait to, for the person to finally say something. Except unless you are better looking than me, uh, unless you you're born you're born with good looks, um, you know you know how to make yourself look good on camera. I don't. I mean, you you've gotten used to how I look now because you've watched a bunch of my videos. But people who don't know me don't. No, no, I'm not used to how I look, so they don't like how I look, and it, you know, and so, uh, and so it took three months for them to trust my message enough to to be able to be willing to start watching my videos and commenting on them. So, so, um, so then anyway, so now they're now they're starting to to watch and comment on my videos, and then um, just uh, a few weeks ago, I decided to make my first offer to that audience. So with great trepidation and uh, curiosity, I asked my audience, hey, um, would any of you be interested in a membership program where I have a Facebook group, uh, we would meet members only, call once a week, and I would facilitate you know, the personal growth, spiritual development, um, and help you get to know each other as well. And it would cost this much, um, you know. And I, I try to compare it with other similar. Um, these types of programs usually cost this, and this would cost that. And I shared it as a status, you know, as my normal way of doing it: text-only posts on Facebook business page uh, for that side business. And I waited, and I was curious to see if there'd be any response. Um, of course, I boosted it to my warm audience there. And after a week, um, it turns out to be one of the uh, lowest performing ads I've run on that side business. I spent about 30, well, out in the blog post that I'll put a couple hours from now in, in, the, in, the, in the notes below this video, I will um, give you all the stats. But long story short, it, it was underperforming as an ad in terms of how much I spent versus how many people I reached. And how many people liked it, and you know, etc. Zero comments. So it was a post asking for feedback. Hey, would you be interested? How could I make this better? It wasn't a very long post. It was just a couple of bullet points on what. Just kind of wanted to, to test the waters here. Nobody commented. So I was I was quite discouraged about that. Um, but there were four shares, which is kind of interesting. Like, hmm, people shared it. They didn't comment. Maybe they were like sharing it with friends like hey might you be interested in this i don't know what but so a little bit of encouragement a couple people shared it i spent like uh, i may have mentioned i spent about 30 dollars boosting it to my warm audience and so how would you advise me <laughs> i'm curious i'm curious because i think the uh, one of the best ways for you to learn uh how to deal with your own discouragement and disappointment is to advise or encourage somebody else who is going through discouragement and disappointment. And now me being in my own spot, it's very hard for me to advise myself on this, right? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a decent business coach for other people, right? Have you noticed it's, always, it's almost always easier to give advice to other people 
because you're more objective. You, you know, you're not in the emotions that they're going through. Um, and you can see, you can usually see more context in terms of what other people are, you know, than, than they can because they're so absorbed in their own situation. So how would you advise me uh, on this? Knowing everything you've already consumed of my content, uh, you know my, some of you know a lot about my methods and my philosophy. So how would you advise me? I'm in this, I'm in this state of um, discouragement about that side business. Oh, nobody said anything. And well, this haven't even worked six months of work hundred, you know, uh, or I think over a thousand, yeah, over a thousand dollars for sure of Facebook ads to build the audience and no sales, no, no inquiries, no interest. Uh, how would you advise me? So I invite you, if you are able to pause this video now and comment below, I'd love to know. I honestly would love to know how you would, uh, advise me or how you would encourage me or what, what words of, uh, support, uh, or ideas do you have for me? Okay, so, all right, now that you've done that, um, or not, it's up to you. Um, so, what I would, so, you know, I'll have to say, uh, this is not my first rodeo, right? This is not my first business. And so, um, I, I have, of course, over the years, pr done a lot of campaigns and, and launched a lot of products and services and programs and events. So I know what it's like to have nobody respond because that has happened to me many times in the last 10 years. So it's not the first time I've experienced this. Now, some of you may, no matter what's going to happen, like I said, your success is inevitable, but also it's inevitable that you're going to experience um, some situation where you, the results are far less than you expected. I mean, just statistically, if you're going to succeed, you're going to have to experiment a lot. And all along the way, you're going to experience one, probably many times where you're like, wait, I really expected this to work, or I really hoped this would work. And it didn't work at all. Like nobody wanted it. So you need to prepare yourself for that kind of situation. Preparing yourself doesn't mean Oh, I'm so scared. So I'm therefore I'm not going to try. And it's also not, okay, I'm going to put this offer out now. Probably nobody's going to care. Probably nobody's going to want it. So, oh no, you know, no, it's preparation is like, I'm going to put this out it, and be open. It could be that nobody will want it or it could be that a lot of people want it. I am really curious how, what along the spectrum it's going to be. So you have to be prepared to Accept both ends of the spectrum. Nobody wants it, and everybody wants it. Okay, um, to just mentally be prepared. Like it could be either way. I'm really curious, and either way is a win. Okay, if everybody wants it, well, that's that's amazing. That's wonderful. I'll I'll, I'll create the product. I'll I'll go ahead and, and run the program. If nobody wants it, I'm like, huh? Then it will incentivize me to be more curious, more energized. My curiosity will be more energized when nobody wants it, okay? More than if everybody wanted it. I mean, yes, I, I think at the either end of the spectrum, my curiosity is particularly energized, right? But it's like, if nobody wants it, I'm like, wow, that is quite a puzzle. And I, that is one stance that I invite you to try on. Huh. That's quite a puzzle. You know, that's basically what I said to them. I said, huh, wow, I've been building this audience. They've been commenting on my stuff, and nobody said anything about this offer. Wow, how interesting. How interesting, right? So as I uh, look at my own methodology, my own business and marketing methodology, uh, I, you know, now I'm going to advise myself. Um, obviously, if I don't know the audience that well, if I don't know the niche that well, because I get two hours a week for six months, that's a total of, um, you know, less than 50 hours, right? You know, let's see, about eight hours a week or eight hours a month of work times six months, 48 hours. And I'll say 50, let's round it up, 50 hours. I spent only 50 hours on this entire business, the side business. So I don't really know the niche that well. 
I don't know my audience at all because I haven't had any one-to-one -one conversations with my audience. So this is another thing I'd love your feedback on. It's really hard to build an authentic business being anonymous, like not saying who I am, what my background is, you know, number one. And number two is it's also really hard to build a business you spending only two hours a week. It's, it's really hard because you just don't have enough time. I don't have enough time to like brainstorm and try different things. And just it just takes the spaciousness of time to let my brain work on it, right? So, but, but, the, but the, the part about having to hide and, and not tell my network and be so hush-hush is really hard. I mean, because it's like, you know, it's like I'm trying to be authentic, but then I can't, I can't really tell them who I am kind of thing. So, um, so, but then the reason why I'm hiding it from you is because I do have a fear. And tell me what you think about this. My fear is that somebody in the future or multiple people in the future once the side business is successful, somebody will say, well, of course, George's thing is successful. It doesn't apply to me because George already had an audience. He, already, he, was, he was already successful. So this next thing was, of course, going to be successful. And that doesn't apply to me because I have no audience and I can't really learn from George because, see, that's exactly what I'm trying to prevent. So that's why I'm hiding it from you because I don't want you to, you know. So tell me what you think. I mean, it's, it's challenging. So, so what I... What I would advise myself to do um, is remember the path of experimentation to, towards inevitable success is continued trying of, hey, do you want to buy this? No? Oh, how interesting. Well, let me talk to you. What, what, would, what, what are you buying? And that's what I'm not able to do. I'm not able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with my client, with my people in my new audience, because if I do, I'd, I'd have to use my email. I mean, I could create a new email account. Like, I don't want to complicate it. I only have two hours a week. So, like, I would probably use my, my normal email account, which then they'll know my name, and then they'll be able to see my background and all that stuff. My email signature is already programmed. It's like, all these things about hiding um, for this purity of this experiment, that's like, that's like, you can, you can tell it's kind of frustrating for me. So I have to practice breathing joy and, and playfulness into that experimentation. But I, I need to have conversations with my audience members, like to say, hi, you know, Anne or Bob. Um, thanks for being part of this. You've been seeing my messages, and I'm just really curious. What have you, like, what are you going through, you know, in your life? Whatever you want to share that, that this that my my messages are helping you with and and oh and have you have you bought any kind of courses or coaching counseling on on these areas oh really oh you bought it from that person oh that's interesting so then make a note go study that person's offerings whoever they bought it from so I need to be having these conversations right and and besides those conversations I think I should probably do a survey to my audience to kind of start getting a sense of what they're buying and what they're what they're wanting to learn more about or or what they might buy uh so um i have to figure out uh you know and i may reveal my name there uh but not reveal that to you all so i mean i, I might compromise and say well I, I i need to reveal my name there so that i can actually have conversations uh with them and um, be more authentic there um the other thing is uh i need to do some sampling that's another you know part of my philosophy is if people don't haven't tasted what you do and it's not a mainstream thing uh they're probably not willing to buy life coaching is getting mainstream so people are starting to understand oh yeah buying life coaching therapy is mainstream but any kind of other kind of counseling health coaching is not even mainstream and nutrition nutritionist is mainstream but health coaching or relationship coaching, those are not mainstream yet, you know? Um, career coaching is, is mainstream. People understand career counseling, career coaching. But anything that's, you know, spiritual mentoring is definitely not mainstream. People usually go to their pastor for free, so why would they pay, right? Or go, you know, so, so there are certain things people are not used to paying for. So you have to do a sampling for them to say, oh, wow, this is really good. Well, this is really good fit for me. I'd love to do more. And to do sampling means I have to be, you know, reveal, again, my scheduling system. It all has my name attached, and I don't have to set something up just for this business because two hours a week, barely enough time. Content, ads, 
logistics of you know the Facebook page and trying to create a website now and anyway so uh, and personal invitations that's the other thing oh another thing that that I haven't done yet of course is the repetition of the offer if they only saw it once it's only planted a seed and the seed might take some nurturing to grow so it could be that if I keep mentioning this membership offer that maybe three months down the road there'll, there'll be enough interest then for people to take me up on it but it is discouraging that there were no comments um, in the first try, right? So, uh, you know, I am very, I'm much more willing to try new things uh, or to try a reframe than to keep pushing the same thing with many repetitions. Because I'll tell you this, if something is meant to have traction, it usually has traction really early on. If it doesn't have traction really early on, you need to, reframe it quite differently or something needs to change uh, change significantly enough where it's like a it's like a new version of it and then see if there's traction early on and and like if I for example if I you know this this post that I boosted the the, the, the offer reached about a thousand people of my warm audience from the side business if I got something like you know 10 comments of people you know one percent of those I reached saying yeah I might be interested right then, then I'll be like, okay, so there's some possible early traction, but zero comments is, you know, not not a good sign. And if I kept pushing this, I don't think repetition will work for something like this. So personal invitations, that's another uh, thing that I didn't do because, again, I didn't want to, it's awkward for me to reach out and say, well, this is Facebook page, blah, 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 but I'm not revealing my name. So it's all, everything is kind of weird about it. So. Uh, anyway, I think I think that's all I'm going to say for 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 the update on this project and kind of what I'm learning. Another thing I just I'll end with this encouragement is that a reminder for you that nobody is going to make you do your business. Nobody makes me write my post every week. Nobody does, and that's especially in that side business when I'm just starting to build an audience. Nobody's making me do it. You know, they they don't make barely even ca you know care. If I don't show up week after week, you know, because they're new enough where they're not used to that rhythm yet, right? Even six months is, is new, you know, it's new. So nobody's making me do it. So I have to make myself do it. And of course, bring joy instead of a for it's not a forcing requirement, strong arm myself, but bring a joy and I was like, oh yeah, opportunity, joyful discipline. Otherwise, the thing never builds itself. You know, it's like if, if I don't show up consistently, Who's going to build the business? Nobody's going to build the business. So I have to remind myself all the time. Um, and in some ways, I'm grateful for all of you witnessing this process because I am accountable to you. You know, you, you know, you probably won't even know if I don't do an update, but maybe some of you might ask. I hope you will ask me if you don't see a monthly update about this project. So, so in other words, you might want to announce it to your friends and family that you're building a business, that you're building this thing, and ask them to ask you about it. Uh, public accountability, social accountability is incredibly powerful because we are tribal creatures. We are, we, we care about what other people think of, of, of us. So, all right. Well, thanks for those who are, who are joining me here um, for this. I see uh, Jace and Carissa and Sharon, Lisa, Alejandra, and uh, let's see here, Sue, uh, Sue Fern and Kevin, thank you all. And I'm just kind of seeing some of the comments here and checking out some of the live comments. Um, yeah, Sharon, thank you for your uh, encouragement there to say that she, she's saying that this is how, how she does it when, when you know, she encounters this kind of situation. She has zero attachment to the outcome. As you have said, just put it out. They may not want it now, uh, and she says she's in a permanent state of curiosity. I do exactly that, huh, and then move on to the next step. I wonder if, she, always, she continues to write, I wonder if, if you've been simply doing text content, maybe your offer was too big. It's too big of a jump from content only to membership. Yeah, good point. Maybe I should try, like I said, right? Got to try something totally different. If, if I'm trying to sell them an ongoing monthly membership, maybe I should sell them a one-time $25, you know, two-hour online course or something like that so yes you're right I, I probably should try that next um, Jay said you know I had a similar experience people liked and shared it but just only one person commented they said they wanted what to offer and uh, what I decided to give myself Jace wrote 
and my audience is to give some more time and to keep building the relationship between us. After a few months, I'll try again. If that's good enough for the nice, I suggest you give it a bit more time. Again, following your previous advice, you might also want to consider the sampling. Yeah, so that's the, that's part of the challenging thing. Um, so let's see here. Um, yeah, and, and Sharon says, spiritual mentorship is a hard concept to market. Being anonymous, that's a really challenging combo. Yeah, exactly. You know, they, they have no idea who I am. I mean, they see me on video talking once a week for a few months now, but uh, th there's no relationship there. There's just a the relationship with this, this this phrase that I'm using on my fan page, you know. So, um, yeah. All right, well, thank you all, and I look forward to any other comments you want to, suggestions, ideas you want to share. And I hope that this, and of course, I'm going to keep going. Remember, success is inevitable. I, I believe that. I truly do. And I hope you will believe it too. Repeat that to yourself. Success is inevitable. Am I willing to stay on the path of experimentation? And I am. I'm, I'm willing. Because thanks, thanks also to all of you who are witnessing my journey. So please use your, uh, your own audience, your own friends and family. Like, ask them, please be my accountability for my project, you know. Yeah. So. All right, I hope this is helpful, encouraging. If you have any questions or anything you want me to do videos on in the future, let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Take care, be well.